There are few bodily fluids in the world more taboo and controversy inspiring than menstrual blood. People react to periods the way you'd expect people to react to things that are way more unnatural and horrifying, especially considering that half the population has to deal with their menstrual cycle at some point in their lives. That's why people react so strongly when we hear stories about people that involve this stuff. Periods are taboo and nobody wants to talk about them. A great example of this taboo in action is the backlash an unknown woman received on the internet for revealing that she uses her menstrual blood to cook for her husband. People were understandably outraged, especially considering that her husband didn't know that it was happening, and as much as periods shouldn't be so taboo, you probably shouldn't be cooking with menstrual blood. However, there's a really long and old tradition of women using their menstrual blood to cook for the men in their lives for different reasons, and unsurprisingly, it has a lot to do with magic. Here's everything you need to know about why people use their menstrual blood and food, not to mention other things. Would you ever consider cooking with your menstrual blood? What do you think about magic that uses menstrual blood? Let us know in the comments. An unknown woman got a lot more than she bargained for. Her story about using her menstrual blood to cook for her unsuspecting husband got a ton of backlash when the story went viral on social media. However, she wasn't worried about it and she even came clean as to why she does it. Her reasoning was simple. She admitted outright that she cooks with her menstrual blood because she doesn't want her husband cheating on her. She swears up and down not only that it works but that her aunt also does it and is in a happy marriage to a man who wouldn't look twice at another woman. She knows it's wrong, but also knows it's not poisonous. While she admitted that she knew that cooking for her husband using her period blood without him knowing was wrong, she doesn't think it's poisonous. She was adamant that if cooking with her period blood was the way she could keep her marriage intact, she's okay with continuing to do it. Sick, if that is the way my marriage will be intact, I have no regrets. I'm a very emotional being. I might die if my heart is ever broken. Who are you people to judge me? She even bragged that her husband worships the feet she walks on. The woman in question is absolutely sure that her husband loves her so much primarily because she makes his food special. In her own words, since I got married I can beat my chest and say my husband has never misbehaved outside. This isn't even the only story of this happening. Fair library user Gegogi told a story about his ex who was practicing voodoo that involved a remarkably similar practice. He began his story setting the stage of his former relationship, I ran into a friend of my ex and had a long talk about my failed relationship. They had a falling out and she was happy to spill the beans. My ex was secretive and I didn't have a clue she was a witch until getting deeply involved with her. This revelation freaked me out to say the least, and helped lead to a painful and fiery breakup. His ex lied about how deep she was into magic continued his story by saying that his ex lied about her interest in magic by saying it was strictly academic. According to her friend, she was much better at blood magic than anyone gave her credit for. Her friend told me my ex had spells going on friends, family and, of course, all sorts of binding and love spells on me. She was serious enough to chant spells naked under a full moon on high ground. One thing she said that blew my mind was my ex frequently urinated and placed menstrual blood in my food and drinks. Apparently the belief is a man that eats or drinks a woman's pee or menstrual flow is bound to her for life. He was actually surprised that he fell for his ex in the first place. I had an overwhelming animal attraction to her and lost all my common sense in judgment, maybe she had strong natural pheromones. Sheesh, she wasn't my type in terms of physical appearance, personally or lifestyle. I'm normally attracted to petite Asian women, easygoing personalities and blend best with artist lifestyles. Something must have worked as I fell for her harder than any woman in my life and I'm still limping around emotionally a year later. Another woman put menstrual blood in her boyfriend's food on a whim. The woman, known only as Rose, was dating a man with a huge sexual appetite, and came home to him cheating on her after she went away for a week to see her parents. She forgave him, but she vowed not to forget. After one week I forgave him because I love him, but I was still angry with him. He asked me to cook rice for him. I was on my period, I removed my pet and suck it inside water and made sure the blood was very much so in the water, I added my urine into the water. And I made stew for him, he came back and ate the food without knowing. The comments on her story are not just insulting towards her, they were downright scary to read. There's a reason why women so often resort to this sort of thing. Every culture has a type of spell or school of magic that involves bodily fluids or body parts, and those body parts can vary quite widely. 
Most notably, they can use things like placenta, spit, semen, tears, urine, hair from both your head and genitalia, and oddly enough, nail clippings. Menstrual blood plays a starring role in this type of magic. It has been said that any man that consumes the menstrual blood of a woman is bound to that woman for life. Many women have done this over the course of civilization, but two major magical sects that swear by this are African voodoo and Sicilian folk magic. A lot of this boils down to pheromones. Many witches who do this believe that just a bit of menstrual blood in a man's coffee, tea, or food is powerful enough to bind that man to her for life. There isn't even a spell or a ritual involved to get this to work, the action alone carries power of its own. Some witches don't even bother with that. One witch who wrote a guide to blood magic on Lucky Mojo was so upfront about her use of menstrual blood, she didn't even bother hiding it. I have directly fed gobbets of menstruum to my lover, 